got the sense early in this game it was not going to be a defensive showdown mm -hmm. between the Nets and the Hawks. A lot of offensive fireworks. It carried over into the fourth quarter, and that's when Kyrie Irving took over for Brooklyn. Durant, he was steady throughout, got off to a little bit of a slow start. Irving could not make a basket in the first half, but everything changed in the fourth and Kyrie just got into one of those zones, Sarah. And that's what makes it a true elite scorer is when you have a short memory and when you're not going to sh stop shooting. And yeah. he understands that it's crunch time, it's closing time, still taking those shots. And you said it, said it Kevin Durant was steady throughout the whole game, but seven nets were in double figures. Yep. Joe Harris was excellent throughout the course of this game, knocking down some big shots early. Jared Allen, what he was able to do in controlling the inside. And I think we saw a great amount of ball movement. I mean, the fact that Karis LeVert has eight assists, Kevin Durant, his facilitation, everyone got in on the action, was making some timely buckets to make this was a fun one and closing it out with a win. Second unit, Landry Shamet, who has been struggling with that jump shot, came in with a reputation as an excellent shooter. Nets fans just hadn't seen it yet. Coaching staff knew it was there, and Shamet looked comfortable. It looked like he belonged, and that's what they envision as part of this second unit. Versatility offensively and defensively when you put Jeff Green in there guarding multiple positions, including the five spot. No doubt, and I think that's what we're going to continue to see in terms of rotation for Steve Nash, who he's using when, the ability to go a little bit smaller yep. when they had Torrey and Prince, Kevin Durant, and Jeff Green uh, there in the same same lineup. So I think as we continue to see how Steve Nash uses these guys, we also understand the competitiveness amongst all of them. Yep. You need to earn your time on the floor, and we're continuing to see that. Um, but so much that really came out of this game to me was the idea that this team is unselfish, and they will share the basketball, and you're going to have some big numbers and some big scoring efforts from the stars you expect, but everyone is going to be needed to play a role. With this truncated schedule, 72 games, first half of the season when the NBA released its schedule, there was something a little different. The series that we're seeing around the league, and the Nets and Hawks are participating in it. They'll play again on Friday night, so it does have that playoff feel, adjustments. Now Brooklyn will go back in the lab. The Hawks coaches will do the same thing in preparation for game two. And I think that's a different part of what we're seeing out of Atlanta. And I'm really excited to see some of these adjustments and changes made because in the past it was, okay, what do you do to get the ball out of Trey Young's yep. hands? And now he's surrounded by a lot of shooters, a lot of scores. We saw what John Collins can do in that ball screen and in the pick and roll, but also what Reddish and Hunter have come to look like. Herter, of course, you have off the bench. Bogdanovich, his ability to shoot. The list goes on with this Hawks team. So I'm I'm curious to see what adjustments you use and really trying to shake things up of the coverages and the looks that Trey Young in particular, but this whole team has when they go at it again on Friday. Nets end their losing streak at two, bounce back, and they hand the Hawks their first loss of the season.